In this lesson, I'll show you how to calculate the number of ATP molecules produced during beta oxidation of odd number carbon atom fatty acids. The question reads, how much ATP is formed when a 17 carbon fatty acid molecule undergoes beta oxidation? Take a look at our fatty acid. Notice that each of these vertices represents one carbon atom, and together there are 17 of them. In step number one, what we have to do is let n represent the number of carbon atoms. So n is equal to 17. The number of rounds of beta oxidation and the number of acetyl-CoA molecules produced can be found using this formula. So we'll take 17 and divide it by 2, then subtract 1.5. So we'll take our number 17, divide by 2, and subtract 1.5 from that. 17 divided by 2 is 8.5, and if we take away 1.5 from that, we end up with 7. This means that seven acetyl coenzyme A molecules are formed within seven rounds. Just to give you a visual of what's happening, for every round, two carbon atoms are cleaved. So this carbon atom is cleaved into acetyl CoA. So is this, this, this. That's our fourth round, fifth round, sixth round, seventh, and in our eighth round, you can't break this down any further. Instead, you have a three carbon molecule. This three carbon molecule is called propanol, and propanol also gets attached to coenzyme A, forming propanol coenzyme A. Let's discuss that further. I've written that information right here, and that's produced in the last round. Now, based on the yield of three ATP per NADH and two ATP per FADH2 that are oxidized in the respiratory chain, We'll multiply this number by the number of rounds and multiply this number by the number of rounds. So we have 3 times 7. And before I continue, I just wrote 2.5 and 1.5 above the highlighted numbers. The reason why I noted that is because some sources suggest that instead of 3 and 2, it's 2.5 and 1.5 per NADH and FADH2 that enters oxidative phosphorylation. Therefore, it depends on your teacher that you choose the right one. For the sake of simplicity, I'll be using 3 and 2. Now let's continue where we left off, and we'll multiply 2 by the 7 rounds. 3 times 7 is 21, and 2 times 7 is 14. Now in this point over here, we say multiply the number of acetyl-CoA's, which in our case is 7, by 12 ATP. Now once again, you multiply by 12 ATP if you're using 3 and 2. Otherwise, you'd multiply by 10 and use 2.5 and 1.5. So I'll take 12 and multiply that by 7, which is equal to 84. Let's add up all these numbers. 84 plus 21 plus 14. I'll use my calculator. 84 plus 21 plus 14 gives us 119 ATPs formed. Now don't forget that in order for beta oxidation to occur, the molecule, the fatty acid, needs to be activated at the very beginning and that's equivalent to two ATPs. So we'll take our number of 119 and subtract it from two, which yields 117 ATP molecules. Now you're probably wondering what happened to propanol coenzyme A. Let's discuss that here. The propanol coenzyme A must undergo a carboxylation in a sequence of reactions requiring biotin and vitamin B12. These reactions produce succinyl CoA at a cost of one ATP, considered as taking away one ATP from what we found earlier. The conversion of propanol CoA to succinyl CoA is an anaplatoric reaction, which means that the formation of succinyl CoA is an intermediate to another metabolic reaction downstream. And because of this, the molecule of succinyl CoA continues in the Krebs cycle, generating oxaloacetate in the following sequence of reactions. These are important. Notice that in various levels of this reaction, ATPs are being formed. In the first part, one ATP equivalent is formed, two ATPs are generated in the second, and three are in the last. One plus two plus three is equal to six, minus the one that we accounted for here, that yields five. This suggests that the incorporation of succinyl CoA originated from the propanol CoA generates six minus one, that's five. I'll take 117 ATP, which is what I found earlier, and add five to that. Now the reason why you don't see calculations of odd number carbon fatty acid calculations online is because most fatty acids are even number chains. So there's a lack of literature pertaining to this topic. 
and that is how to calculate the number of ATP molecules produced during beta oxidation.